The mental and incisive injections will be demonstrated as one injection since clinically both nerves can be anesthetized with one injection. However, remember that they do anesthetize two separate nerves and areas. The mental injection anesthetizes soft tissue only. The facial gingiva and vestibular mucosa from the mental frame and through the midline, the skin of the chin, and the lower lip. The incisive injection anesthetizes the hard tissues or pulpal tissues, the periodontal ligaments, pulpal and osseous tissues from the mental frame and through the midline in one quadrant. Radiographs are helpful to identify the mental foramen. Palpate the landmarks. The landmarks to be palpated are identical for both injections. They are the depth of the mucobuccal fold, the mandibular premolars, and the mental foramen. Again, radiographs are helpful here. Place finger in the mucobuccal fold and press against the body of the mandible in the first molar area. Move finger anteriorly until the bone feels irregular and somewhat concave. The foramen is usually between the two premolars. The patient may feel the pressure of your finger on the nerve that causes a tingling sensation when compressing against the bone. Ask the patient to confirm as you palpate. Place topical for one to two minutes over the mental foramen. A 25 or 27 gauge short needle is used for either of these injections. Retract the lower lip and buckle soft tissues laterally to locate the penetration site. The bevel of the needle faces the bone and tissue is pulled taut. Penetration site is slightly anterior and superior to the mental foramen. There are two pathways or methods of administering these injections. Both will be demonstrated in this video. Method one, the operator sits at the 12 o'clock position. After asking the patient to close their eyes, the syringe is aligned vertically with the patient's cheek to approach the penetration site. Following initial penetration, advance the needle tip at an angle directly vertical to the foramen to a depth just superior to the foramen. Depth of insertion varies with height of alveolar process and the angle of the tissue retraction, but is typically four to six millimeters. Aspirate and deposit solution. Method two, the clinician is positioned in front of the patient Retract the lip, keep the syringe as parallel as possible with the occlusal plane, insert the needle at the depth of the vestibule, approximately four to six millimeters, so the needle will be directly over the frame when the anesthetic is deposited. Aspirate and deposit solution. With either method, deposit approximately one third of a carpial over 20 to 30 seconds. If the injection is completed at this point, only soft tissues innervated by the mental nerve will be anesthetized. After gently withdrawing the needle and making the needle safe, apply pressure at the injection site for a minimum of one full minute. This pressure can be applied by the clinician or by the patient. To obtain anesthesia of the teeth or the pulpal tissue, Gentle finger pressure must be maintained directly over the injection site to increase the volume of solution entering into the mental foramen. This may be accomplished with either intraoral or extraoral pressure. Comments. Either technique anesthetizes the areas, but because the second technique keeps the syringe out of view of the patient, it offers a slight psychological advantage over the first technique, particularly if the patient is anxious or needle phobic. A possible complication of this injection is pain if bone is contacted. Avoid pain of contacting periosteum by depositing a small amount of solution ahead of the needle and inserting at the very depth of the mucobuccal fold. Other complications might include hematomas or postoperative discomfort.
Cross or overlapping innervation of nerves at the midline may cause incomplete anesthesia in this area. A supplemental infiltration of the central incisor may be required if this occurs.